The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. I'm Yasser and I'm sitting alongside Vega Hi, because yes, we're sir. bringing you a wonderful summer chess classic. Vega, it's been great fun and the rounds yeah. have gone really, really I fast. Know. I'm a little bit sad that we're almost like ending the tournament. I know, we're in the championship rounds everybody. This is round eight, but first of all, let's take a look at the standings. After seven rounds of competition, Vega, please yeah, do the we honors. We three three-way tie in group A between Benjamin Wolk John, John Burke and then <laughs> Nico Theodore, that is insane. They all have four and a half and our key matchup is going to be most probably Benjamin and John because they're playing each, each other. other. So it's a wow. very exciting day. No question for about us. it that uh, group A, three player tie for first. But now tell us about the group B. Because I got a surprise for you there too. There we go. <laughs> Even here we have three-way tie for the first. Semyon Lamassov, Andrew Hong, Akshay Chandra with five points. They are leading the tournament. Fantastic. And tell us, Begum, about the f tournament format for the two events as we get a view there of the playing it's hall. It's two 10-player round robin right. with 90 minutes for the first 40 moves, 30 minutes for the rest of the game with 30 seconds increment throughout the game. Not much left, but Tell us about the remaining schedule. So we are already <laughs> in round eight. Almost, yes. Yeah, and in <clears throat> tournament round eight today, uh, they're playing it right now, and we have the final round tomorrow, and then maybe playoffs in case uh, right. we have a tie for the fourth. And uh, tomorrow, the round will actually be starting a little bit earlier. Absolutely. We'll be coming on at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Two hours. And the round starts early. at 11 30 a.m. Wonderful. And as we get started to begin our broadcast, tell the viewers what they can expect in terms of the pairings. Let's start with Group A. Group A pairings, as usual, it's great. All right. of the great uh, grandmasters are competing. And our key matchup, as we mentioned before, it's Benjamin Bok versus John Burke, who are the leaders of the tournament. Two players tied for first. And let's just jump into that game just briefly. Uh, the, players the players have just, on uh, the right, just came out of the opening. <clears throat> and I personally find this position a little bit easier for black to play, even though Black has these double pawns. This pawn on c4 is kind of like in the throat as it's controlling some very key squares and the pawn on d2 is backwards. It's remarkable, uh, Biggin, mm -hmm. if you took that d2 pawn and put it on the d4 square. It's immediately my position. <laughs> <laughs> it's a transformation. Yeah. White goes from slightly worse to much better. Exactly. I mean, just like, wow. And as we mentioned before, as we were talking before yeah. the stream, B3, uh, can we go back a little bit? A like, little bit? Yeah. Yes, this right here. This move was a very bold move by Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin, who thinks, I'm sure I will win the pawn. Yeah, well, you better. Uh, the current position, knight g4, f4, he wanted to stop this very nasty queen takes h2 checkmate business. Rook b1, rook here, and we're up to date with the players. I'm a little bit mystified uh, by that move, uh, rook to b8. You know, somehow, I'm looking at that d3 square. I don't know if I should be playing queen e6 and rook d3, or I don't know if I should be playing queen d3 immediately. It just seems I'm not 100% sure that, that rook... Uh, rook to b8, because now, as we were coming on air, you were mm -hmm. saying to me, yes sir, knight e4 is a very serious threat. Maybe he's going to eat that pawn on c4 <laughs> after all. Oh, <laughs> well, if you do, it's is great. The is also kind of fake for white. So. Exactly. Tell us about the pairings for uh, group B as we see a visual there with the players group on Group B, uh, some of the leaders are competing and trying to win. And we have a, our key matchup, which is Jacobson versus Lamassov. Brandon and Semyon, it's a very important uh, game for both of them because right. uh, Lamassov is leading the tournament with five points right. alongside Andrew and 
Ja. Ja, de andere. Ja, de andere. Ja, de andere. Ja, de And in this game, by the way, Brandon is, in, I'm going to say, a comfortable endgame position. It's not that easy. There's one weakness on the board. And it's sort of like to attack that weakness, you got to play moves like Ooh. bishop g3, e4, bishop f2. Otherwise, I really like your idea. Yeah, otherwise it's not so easy to, mm -hmm. to grab that weakness. Also, you, earlier you were asking me how... You can attack the pawn on c5, and we were right. trying to analyze how where should we put the bishop, right. and then bishop g3, bishop f2 seems great. Yeah, it, it, it fits the bill. Uh, from black's point of view, black can see what white wants to do. White wants to double up on the c file, bring the bishop to f2, and I think uh, in these types of positions, you kind of throw the a pawn down. It's like a jab. You know, you kind of go. Mm -hmm. You know, a5, a4, and you try to make the b2 pawn yeah. a little bit backwards. You look for counterplay on the queen mm -hmm. side. Uh, for those of you with excellent memories, you will recall the 1972 World Chess Championship match between Bobby Fischer and Boris Spassky, where against a5, Bobby ended up putting his pawns at an a4, b3, and won what was considered at the time the game of the match. So uh, we'll keep a careful eye on this one and uh, tell us, uh, Begum, these players have been fighting very, very hard in this tournament. Mm -hmm. What are they fighting for? They're fighting for uh, some nice prizes. Yeah, <laughs> okay. so for group A, first place is $6,000, second place is $4,000, and third place is $3,000, and then rest of the players also get uh, some nice prizes, and then total prize fund of the tournament is $22,000. Thank you, St. Louis Chess Club, and in the B group? B group first uh, prize is $4,000, second one two and a half, and third prize is $2,000 with the total prize fund of $14,000. Uh, again, very, very nice that uh, these classic tournaments take place here. We have four each and every year, and it's been, St. Louis has, has really helped a lot of players Absolutely. get their norms. And it's so important to just have that competition as well. As you mentioned, I think it was yesterday's, uh, two of the slew players yeah. are tied for first. Let's just jump into the games right away. Let's uh, go to the game of Akshat Chandra, one of our tournament co-leaders. I always like um, going to the leaders mm -hmm. at the start of the round. It's sort of like respects, you know, playing yeah. our respects to everybody. As we get a very conventional uh, English uh, kind of what we would call a reverse dragon. I wasn't C4. sure about e3 knight d2 knight c4 idea. e3, yeah, oh, this is pretty standard stuff. I mean, uh, I played this all my chess career. I'm used to, that. now that move is a little bit surprising for me mm -hmm. because I'm really used to these types of ideas. Uh, knight takes, rook takes. And the idea is, I'm just putting some moves on the board mm -hmm. for the moment, is that we get a position where the imbalance is I have a kingside majority, yep. black has a queenside majority, and I'm always aspiring to play mm -hmm. a3, b4, and you know, away we go. He, Akshat... I would think that the decision he made is because of the tournament standings. Akshat thinks that he needs to win against Landerman, most probably, who is having a bad tournament. Exactly. But Alex Lander, you know, it's kind of funny. You, you, you play in a tournament where one of the highest seeds is having a bad tournament, and people are taking points from Yeah, not only <laughs> like <laughs> points, rating points too. Right? right? But it's dangerous to imagine that you're going to target the highest rated player in the tournaments mm -hmm. because they might suddenly Combined. play the I best know. game it's, of it's their life. It's the most event. dangerous thing because, <laughs> uh, for example, especially when you play black pieces against them, you right. feel like draw should be fine, but the question is that they're playing a battle, but can I actually yeah, try to press absolutely. or not? Here we go. They can wake up in a different mood. And <laughs> right? Okay, but Akshat has his ideas. He's looking to play 
the move d4, d5, perhaps in combination with the move of knight takes b6, because then any recapture mm -hmm. on d5 might come with the tempo. And here he's prepping the big blow. Knight d7 is quite an interesting move. What did you expect? I was thinking of knight e6, but like I thought knight e6, d5 is following. Yeah, and somehow white's bishops uh, visually make a very pleasing yeah. impression. The, they're more effective than black's bishops that are still on their original squares. Can we still consider after knight d7 and the move played in the game? Uh, knight d7 uh, and... And still d5. As well, in this yeah. position. Uh, doubtlessly, uh, when he got to this position, Chandra in his mind was thinking that he would like a knight to end up being on d5. So maybe something like this position. I mean, but it's still nice for white, exactly. right? Exactly. I mean, it's not That's like... That's why I thought knight, knight is placed on e6 better than d7, but maybe I'm wrong. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, well, knight d7, knight e3. Uh, maybe maybe an intimation that uh, mm -hmm. Aksha maybe that's didn't the idea, want to... Maybe that's knight e6 or knight e5. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. didn't want to unnecessarily create a weakness on c4. And so he retreated his knight, knight e3, knight f6, d5. And again, Aksha is thinking, you know, if there's a massive trade of pawns, if anybody's better, it's, it's me. White. Yeah, because it's white you're, because uh, head of development. that's right. But see, if, ooh, uh, it's a very ambitious <laughs> move, I would say. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I think I would have just said, okay, <clears throat> if you go want ahead, take, do just take it. do your worst. Let I really me. like Bishop D7 because I I need to finish my development right. Clear. And then, uh, if you take on c6, I will take with the bishop. That's right. I do have enough compens compensation if you take on uh, c6, c6. Yeah. with the bishop. I will take back. Yeah, I did. Uh, split my pawns. Split my pawns. I do. I did create a weakness, but my uh, pieces are better placed. I feel like. Well, the rook for the moment, for sure. I mean, after a move, for example, like queen f3, white can say, "Well, I." got a nibble but okay it, like the other game that we were watching there too yeah uh, where there's a weakness on c5 it's only a weakness if you can attack it uh, once again black will be looking to play a5 and a4 yeah. uh, on the other hand conversely I want to say the move c5 wow I I look at that and I say be careful a4 a5 the knight will slip back to the c4 square that's a big passer that's <laughs> that's uh, and he did play a4 of course and he did play d6 because that passer is what it's all about now no doubt when uh, Landerman played the move c5 he 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 pictured this this position in his mind and he was thinking I got gotcha. you I'm I going think, to take this uh, part. Lenderman is going all in. It feels like today is the day when he woke up with that move, right? <laughs> With that move. Very dangerous. Uh, like he's risking, but a4 created a weakness on b3, and you cannot attack on c5, and your d6 pawn is weakness, uh, as not well. weakness as well. So structural-wise, I think both of them have many weaknesses, but the question is, Who's going to use it faster? Yeah, and concretely here, in this moment, it's all about this pawn, right? And the, the move knight f5 begs the question, could I play the move g6? And I, I, I'm very, very cognizant that I got an accident. Yeah, like an accident could appear on that diagonal. I'm very cognizant. Uh, uh, what what do you think would have happened after g6, your first... Uh, you, you don't want to move the knight because that's the pawn, unless you wanted to play here, right? Uh, could it be that... That's the question. Can the, I... Uh, you know, if I take it, can you take knight d1? Knight takes d1? I don't think I'm going to be able to save this pawn. It, yeah, it but just, I'm attacking c5 pawn, so... Uh, right. And then, one. And then uh, that's what I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking the pawn is beyond the supply line. Ooh, wait, wait. <laughs> I want to play 
Can I? Yes, please. I want to play knight e3 if you take this. Knight right. G. Finally using the weakness of g6. Right, okay. And then uh, maybe rook c e1, and then knight comes to f6 as well. I okay. love my bishop. I would love the bishop too. f5. Continue the whole line of play there if for a second. If you play f5, for example, first yes. of all, I can check. King. King goes and... Knight d5. Can I develop? Knight d5 is my... Knight d5, if I play this, you are most probably on time and we don't have much, right? Right, I, 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 I uh, just managed to hold so you at play. So f5, can I be faster, mm -hmm. better? Not faster, better, stronger? Faster, better, stronger. <laughs> Maybe I should go to this position. Okay, but after knight d5, I feel I've got fair chances of, you know, holding the game, rook e6 check. or so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Rook good. Six. Yeah, you did good. No, that's good. Rook check. Rook b1. I, I'm, you know, I. You're holding the position. I feel. Right. I feel like this isn't uh, scary. Okay, so at least. Yeah. I like the the. Oh, we do have uh, quite some moves. Sorry. So, he did play. By the way. Yeah. Um, after knight f5, knight d7, he did not play the move g6. Mm -hmm. Knight b1. Did you see that? <laughs> I didn't see that. Knight b1. I mean, it makes sense because he wants to put uh, his knight on c4. The problem is that where, exactly, where, how about the f5 knight? If you're going to b1. This, uh, is a, this is a strange. Now I do not like it at all. You don't like it at all. So I let's just see. I do not like it at all. Four. Why did I retreat my knight on b1 and never put it on like c4? <laughs> That's uh, a very weird decision. True, but wait, 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 wait. The, Maybe the, tactically the, it's working, but right. Like, so I have. Usually. I I have this move queen e5. Give me the rook. How about bishop g7? Queen c5. Ah, bishop g7. Do I have any attack? That's the question. Queen I... f6. Not really. You're holding f2 too. Queen g5 is not possible. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it. The, the pawn Queen is already like protecting uh, f2. That's the problem. Yeah, and the, so you're right. And the pawn on, the pawn on um, d6, d6 is... I want to say, is still alive. So yeah. be careful. So just a second. So we do have... This position is on the board. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, the position, this position is on the board is rook e4. And then... A second. This is, yes. Yeah. And I'm anticipating... And Akshat is thinking. Or... Yes. He took on e4, right? Just now. Wise decision. And... <laughs> rook takes. Rook takes. Now, 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 now pause this moment. Be, uh, pause for the moment because... The c6 pawn is hanging, so we could always take that. We do have rook d1 as inviting bishop takes uh, d6, mm -hmm. walk into a pin if you like. And then we have the move that l looks the most attractive, which he is queen e5. He immediately played queen e5. That's but I wonder if queen b8 works. Can I play queen b8? Perfectly legal. Perfectly legal. That's, that's weird. And then um, I'm threatening Rook B1. Yes. I know. I see that. I see that. Don't try to trick me. And I me will. Seven. I will try to trick you. I don't know how I'm going to trick you, but I will try. Uh, rook. But for that reason, you need to protect your queen and still play D7, and then try. You need to threaten D8, which is impossible. Right. No, uh, I maybe hear you. he missed Queen B8. You can see Lenderman is getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Queen okay, let's take time, let's see. Right? Just a second. Am I missing something? Maybe, maybe... Uh, After Akshat, missing Akshat, <laughs> uh, Maybe Akshat has, miss, has missed this uh, lovely move, which not only defends the rook, but it pins the pawn. It, it, it defends the rook. It pins the pawn to the queen, so you don't have to, the desirable d7. And uh, that, uh, that, he that, played that, queen b8. It's like a triple whammy. We, de we, we, we defend the rook, attack the knight, and attack the pawn. Queen e5 looks like an overreach. Wait, and maybe immediately he should have played. knight c3 was played. 
as if this was all a part of the program. Yeah. Queen well, uh, the problem with Akshat's position actually is that he has only seconds left. <gasps> That's why he's doing oh. this kind, of, this kind of fast decisions. Oh, but then Queen E five was a bad move, a very, exactly. very bad move. And it seems like Landerman has forty one minutes against one minute. Ooh, ooh, the yeah. The position is not winning by like any means for Black, but yeah, no. The time, I mean, uh, the time is a huge factor. Let's just run around the horn here a bit and. Uh, Again, uh, we're going to just uh, check in on our marquee matchup, and that's the game between uh, Brandon Jacobson and Semyon. Uh, Semyon. Brandon needs a win as he's trailing by one full point, but with a win, <laughs> he could get on the podium. Rook c3 was the last move, and here I'm kind of thinking that it's important because you, you, you do have a wedge. Mm -hmm. That bishop. It's uh, not working. Yeah, it's not working, and I do see. Bishop g3 to uh, uh, f2 on white's agenda. I like white's position. Let's go around the horn. Yes, sir. Yes. And he, also, Brandon is doing everything you told him to do. <laughs> Double on the c file. That's how you uh, win that's the game. How you win Just the game. listen to yes, sir. Uh, well, no, it's like also one of those things that sometimes uh, chess can appear to be very easy. Open files. What do we do with the open files? We put our rookers on the open files. Open diagonals. What do we do with our bishops? We put them in outposts. So you put your knights on the outposts, your bishops on diagonals, the rooks on mm -hmm. both files, your opponent resigns, and the, you go, wow, you played a great game. You go, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was But those are the rules of strategy. Absolutely. Looking good. Looking good here. Justin versus Andrew. Uh, well, it seems wow. like it will end in a draw. Dead draw. Dead draw. Nothing to discuss there. Uh, Armand versus Elshan. Elshan has been having, we talk about roller coaster rides. He's been having one. This is a very uh, mm -hmm. nice imbalance. I would and say rook it's and a, knight it ending. unpleasant uh, uh, for, black for black because of the space. Once you look at this knight is working nicely. First of all, it's blockading your passer, but it's doing a, a yeoman's job. It's d d double trouble. It's blockading and attacking. This king is ready to support your majority, and the rooks look good. So overall, passive, passive, passive. And a like huge white. problem of the position for yeah. black is that knight d6, knight c4 idea is not working because of rook c6, and rook is protected. And you cannot move your pieces, and just king is coming to f4 as right, well. Right, that pin. I it's hate very, being pin. Yeah, it's a very unpleasant position to play. Exactly. King f4 on the board, and here uh, you start to look for desperate ideas like g5, f takes, rook takes, uh, just sacrificing a pawn, because in my opinion, if white just, you know, mundanely is allowed to plod his way up the board uh, with G, G5 and G6, he's simply going to win. Let's take a look at the game of Luca for a moment. Oh, Whoa. what um, is this? Two pawns for an exchange. Very, very powerful. Now it's time knight. to count the pawns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always counting the pawns. Two pawns for the exchange. What? Rook G1. Uh, is that an ambitious move or I, the other? I don't know what that move is. Uh, let's just see the last few moves. Yeah, uh, that's what I, I suspect. The rooks. Are, so white isn't interested in trading rooks, naturally, but hiding it on g1 isn't much of a consolation because, well, hold on. Okay, <coughs> white, no, no, not at all, bless you. White wants to put his knight on d5. I suppose he wants to play g4, king g3, and he's trying to say, I have two pawns against the exchange. Maybe I can push them. I think that's not going to be working that way, but okay. We'll and see. We'll goes. see. We'll go to our, the other uh, group for a moment and uh, check in on our marquee matchup because this was the question right here. After the move f4, he played rook b8 and then played queen, queen d3. d3. We talked about this move as well. And 
why do you need the rook to b8? Maybe the, the rook on a1 to c1, I'm going to say that's useful for white. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if, if you play this, well, you see it immediately it's quite useful for white. White is looking to uh, move the rook, but wait a minute, what is going on here? Ah, back rank mate, sorry, I'm like blind, excuse me. No, they need to play rook b2. Rook b2, yep. And uh, what does Victor Korchnoi say? Weakness is only a weakness if you can attack it. Uh, in this case, you, you've done everything you could. You can't do anything more, and I've got the weakness defended. Now, by the way, I think things are, could easily, easily change in White's favor because long term, I am ready to play knight here rook takes maybe trade the knights mm -hmm. and if, most probably for that reason i need to control e4 square right yeah so probably what would you f5 like? is more okay here. so f5 so if i'm white in my mind trade the knights mm -hmm. if i trade the knights and i put my king on e2 That's a lovely then i get, get to play rook takes c4 so all i want to do is trade knights so Oh, yeah, sir. Oh, you no. escaped my trick. <laughs> what was your trick? Tell us. What I was wanted it? to play, if you play knight a4. Knight a4, very attractive. I, I want to do it. I wanted to take on e3. And what? what did no, I, with the rook. With the rook. Oh. <sighs> okay, that's a, that's a sweet back rank checkmate. Yeah. Did you ever see the book Bobby Fischer Teaches Chess? No. It's the most ridiculous book ever. <laughs> Did you know that it's the most sold book ever? Bobby Fischer Teaches Chess. Really? It's the biggest seller of all time. There's no other book in the world. It's over a million copies sold. Wow. Over one million. I didn't understand why, but... And Bobby Fischer, the world chess champion, teaches chess. And the entire book is devoted to one tactic. And one tactic only. And that tactic is it's the back of <laughs> So I'm a kid, right? I'm 13 years old. I pick up the book. This is Bobby Fischer teaches chess. Holy smokes, I'm ready to learn. The dude's a one-trick pony. That's all he does. <laughs> Back rank I mates, everybody. Hey, at least now you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous. Million copies sold, wow. and it's hilarious. Um, by the way, I forgot to do one very important thing. We have a result. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we forgot right? forgot about it. As Alien we, Vizhnik. As we were coming on air, the player who was undefeated drawing all of his games yeah. did, did a, an, a, a, a boo-boo. <laughs> 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 he did a boo-boo. It was a huge bl blunder by Ilya who drew his seven games. And it's coming upsetting. Into this oh. It's upsetting. I was rooting for his nine draws his as perfection. well. His perfection. Against Romnak who is actually having a good tournament, uh, even though he started the tournament in a very bad way, he was very upset about it, right. now he bounced back. Exactly. Um, strangely enough, this is a very theoretical uh, variation. The two pawn sacrifice for white is so dangerous, it's considered that the best uh, reaction for black is simply to give back the pawns. The players reach this position. And if anybody has anything, and it's very, very marginal, it is white. And after, for example, a move like queen e4, queen takes, bishop takes e4, if you had told me that white would press the game for mm -hmm. another 30 moves and the game would be drawn, I'd say, salute. That's, uh, that's I think that was as the foretold. Problem. Ilya got maybe sick of like draws. <laughs> I was like, let's play, let's keep the but queens. But Ilya very cleverly uh, found a, a wonderful, wonderful tactic in the position, and they played the move rook e1. Now, this is where some controversy occurs, right here, right now. As we were coming on, we were going, oh dear, we think this is a blunder by Ilya, that he played the move rook e1, and his intended tactic fails. The tactic is, of course, if you take my queen, I take your queen, and again, maybe I'm marginally better. It's just like we are still exchanging the queens, but my rook is better. Better place. than on h1. The question is, what would have happened after queen takes e1? 
If now, you just take the coin, then I, I lose an exchange. I, I lose an exchange and the game. So Ilya had seen this and he had foreseen the very nice strike. Bishop takes h7 check. Of course, if you take my bishop, I rescue my queen with check and I pick up your queen. So you don't take my bishop. And this is the position that Ilya had in his mind that, okay, now he's threatening a discovered checkmate. The queen is hanging. This is excellent position for white, just simply excellent. Mm -hmm. And most probably he also saw thought that queen e5 is not working because of bishop f5. Discovered check. And he decided to play rook e1. That's exactly right. And then as his opponent is thinking, Ilya came to realize this very painful discovery that the move queen e3, any bishop check will be met by queen h6 blocking. So then the question is, okay, now I could play f4. and. Uh, I'm still in business, but guess what? I'm not attacking the queen anymore. And suddenly, black wins through very exacting play. He will end up a rook ahead. Ilya can resign. But the crazy part is Ilya resigned. Why? His well, opponent was thinking of, his, of the move. Yeah, right, which is like, okay, crazy. Let your opponent... At uh, least take on him. Take on him. And then Ronak was thinking for 20 minutes and Ilya decided to resign, even though I do understand he was tilted, he calculated everything, but why would you still do that? Right. Do never trust your opponent. I think one of the. Let your opponent play rook takes e1. And it was very recent, I'm going to say in the last two years, there was this, it's a wonderful tournament. It's the Norway tournament and it features Magnus Carlsen and just all-stars. So there's Shaq Riyar, Mami Darov playing against Viswanathan Anand. Mm -hmm. Shaq is a little bit better. A blunder like this. Yeah, oh, I do remember. Vishy's thinking, think, thinking, thinking, and Shaq resigns. And then Vishy asked him, why, why did you resign? resign? <laughs> I do remember that. And it must be very painful, very right? Very painful. When your opponent asks. Why did you resign? So in those moments, let your opponent play the move. You can always resign, you can, unless it's going to be checkmate or something like that. Um, a little controversy going on here. I think Ilya prematurely resigned. He should have at least waited for Ranek to At least, play he, even more. though he knows it's, uh, uh, like losing. it's yeah. a losing position, losing tactic, but still he could play that out. Just sure. to see. If he, and just check for your the spectators, opponent. exactly. Absolutely. You've got to find the move queen e3, you've got to find the move bishop g4, you've got and to find queen e7. Queen seven, which is not the easiest. Not so easy. That's why Ronak was taking his time. He, right. he was thinking for 20 minutes. To be sure. Most probably he, he was a little bit shocked and maybe he thought, oh, maybe I get caught out of the opening. Right. You know, it's just different feelings. Exactly. Do you, I, do you, I'll, I'll quickly tell this story because it's, it's my worst story ever <laughs> as a chess commentator. Worst story ever. Okay. So what happened was Yobaba was winning mm -hmm. against Vasily Ivanchuk. Just winning. And Vasily was just grimly hanging on, hanging on, just incredible. And somehow Vasily managed to fight his way to a rook ending where he's worse. Mm -hmm. So Jobova is better. Jobova is better. Then Jobova makes an incredibly strange decision. He offers to trade rooks mm -hmm. and go into a king and pawn endgame. But now keep in mind, Jobova is better in the rook ending. So the only reason that you would offer a king and pawn endgame is if you're better in that, Absolutely. maybe winning. Yeah. It doesn't it look better. Right. To me, it looks like it could even be worse. Anyway, before I could decipher the position and try to understand this king and pawn game, Vasily's in the studio. Mm -hmm. Vasily, come and sit down, sit next to me, tell me what happened. And Vasily, when he's talking chess, he's like a dolphin. Absolutely. He's just, and boop -a -da boom 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 thank you very much, goodbye. What, what, <laughs> for the audience, for, yeah, not, not, not for me, but for the audience, why did Jovova resign? Mm -hmm. 12 moves very quickly. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you very much. But for the audience, could you please mm -hmm. give it move by move? Show us what you mean. And he goes, talk, 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 talk. 
12 moves, bridesmaids, the, the, the pawns are too far, the king can't keep it, and wins for me. Yeah. Thank you. Leaving the studio, he says, any good grandmaster would have seen it instantly. <laughs> <laughs> so I say to the audience, we're going to take a break. I'm going to take the sword that we <laughs> just put in my tummy, and we'll see you on the other side of the break. Now, in the meantime, in the A group, Ivan Sokolov yeah. is watching the broadcast, yeah. and he's laughing at my discomfort. He's laughing, laughing, laughing. Oh, poor Yasser having to deal with Vesely. Next morning, he's at breakfast with... Um, Saric, mm -hmm. Ivan Saric, top grandmaster from Croatia, who's playing in the A group. And, you know, they're getting their eggs and bacon and breakfast mm -hmm. stuff. And Saric says to Sokolov, why did Jovova resign? <laughs> and he goes, Brrr. any good grandmaster <laughs> would see it instantly. <laughs> so it had a ripple <laughs> Uh, you wait for your opponent to find those exactly. good moves, right? Exactly. It's not as easy. Not as easy. When you're playing. Let's jump to the game of the U.S. Junior Champion. Mishra, just here, less than a month ago, uh, won a very, very uh, tightly fought competition. And very he, important competition. That's how he qualified for the U.S. Okay. Precisely. And national chess championships. Precisely so. I'm going to say he's a happy camper in the idea that he's got an evenish position. He's got his majority, and they're pretty uh, flexible. They're, they're, they're not blockaded. Mm -hmm. White has his majority, a little bit better position for the king. But I'm looking at this rook coming over, and, you know, based on my being able to play b4 and rook a2, I think Mishra is doing fine in yeah, this I game. I also think Abimani has a very comfortable position. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the last move, h4, I like this move. Just gaining a little space. When you've got a majority, use it. Absolutely. Use it, put it to work, uh, get it going. And uh, h4 makes a lot of sense from Sasi Darush. Boy, talk about a roller coaster ride. Uh, he has uh, left a lot of points on the table, I want to put it that way. He's in a bishops of opposite color ending, but you know what? If anybody has the advantage, it's white a smidge. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because these pawns, right? They're more vulnerable. Check, bishop, bishop. Just a little I, bit I more do. vulnerable. I do like his position. I do like Darius's position better because it feels like he has many targets to attack. Uh, yeah, I exactly. Like black. And Nicholas uh, is coming in uh, tight for first, exactly, mm -hmm. uh, in this in moment. But he is on the back foot. Uh, let's go to this game between Pranov and Aram. <laughs> Aram and you tell us about <laughs> the draw. What, 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 so what have I, you been discussing? So Aram is my friend. And when he started the tournament, it's like two rounds in or so. He made two draws. I'm like, oh, no worries. You will make nine draws. <laughs> <laughs> I predicted it, and every day he comes out, he made a draw. He's like so upset. I'm like, I, I told, I told you. you. And then I've been annoying him like that. <laughs> Teasing him, yeah. poking and him. And here we go. He's on his way to make his eighth draw. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I oh love it. I, I love how the game our game is going so far. Right. Anish Gary somewhere is smiling. You have very solid. I'm not the only one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it does feel very, very balanced, actually. I am not what to say. Yeah. For um, half open position, it's usually about uh, outposts. And in this particular situation, you know, you you really need the king on b4 or d4. Right? Exactly. But you, there's no way, like there's no way that someone creates is going to. Yeah, right? I I would if I were white, I'd be playing g3 and king mm -hmm. here just to make sure that this outpost yeah, is not a fatal yeah. one. And again, if I'm on a good day, I hate the fact that my mm -hmm. structure a2 to c4 is on mm -hmm. a light square. Uh, that bishop has the potential mm -hmm. of harassing my pawns. If I could play a3, c5, and b4, 
and maintain the pawns there, I'd, be, I'd, I'd feel like uh, I've got nothing yeah. to worry about. At the board, we get a very nice view of the player as he's uh, intensely at work. Yeah. yeah, but you can see he's calm. He's yeah. like, I don't make seven draws. I, it's fine. I will make another, <laughs> another one. Huh? Okay, we'll uh, keep we'll we'll uh, keep our eye on that one again. Our marquee matchup, Benjamin versus John Burke. It looks like the players are going through a liquidation. After the move, Rook B two, G five, seems okay. I like it. Okay, H three. Huh, I'm not they sure. They both don't want to risk too much uh, as well. For sure. This is a huge game for uh, the two leaders in the tournament. Takes, takes, knight, b1, and uh, Benjamin Asks gives the me the pawn. Yeah. <laughs> knight e4, takes, 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 and it's like, it like the vacuum cleaner just came mm -hmm. into the position and just hosed the whole, whole board. Is white going to win a pawn? Uh, can How? white win? Well, look, e4 look, is your idea? Yes. So I, I want was to thinking of rook e2. Okay, rook to e2. Uh, let's say e4. Oh, excuse me, e4. Yeah, most probably it's your best try. Uh, all I'm trying to do is push the rook away from the e pawn, so I will eat here. Had you at the very start. Retreated the rook. That's you know. an option, but I tr I try to be active. I was wondering. G f six should fold. Worst case, I can play rook seven. Well, that's the whole point. I if just I could don't win a pawn. Be. Yeah. Usually, it's pawn. better to just give away a pawn and have an active rook, but right. it's kind of dangerous too. If it's a pass pawn, then yeah. you have problems. This is the current position. We'll keep an eye on this one. I suspect it's closer to a draw. Than anything at the moment, uh, but maybe, maybe White, White can force his opponent to play accurately. Mm -hmm. This was the draw. This is Nicholas. I uh, and, and as well, w Mishra. And uh, Mishra is having a comfortable position. I'll be mm -hmm. you, but we have a result. Yes. In Group B. All right. Andrew Hong drew his game against Justin Wang. All right. Let's take a look at that game. Um, Two juniors, by <laughs> yeah. the way. Uh, I don't know if this is called the Zugertort system, but uh, these systems with the early B2, B3, I really ascribe to two players. Nimzovich in the 30s, he really started playing these, what you might call Indian openings or flank fianchettos, mm -hmm. and Bent Larson. So I really think that uh, rather than calling it a Zuckertort, it's more like those two guys did more to advance but the they, I uh, ideas. They a lot to yeah, them. they sure did. Absolutely. And C7, C5, and you get these, uh, again, these structures where you have these hanging pawns, isolated mm -hmm. queen pawns, and if you, if you study your structures, um, it, w it really, really helps you uh, in terms of um, your planning. So uh, you study the structures and your plans become that much easier yeah. to play. For me, the move rook d1 is a strange move. Um, the half open e file uh, feels like where the rooks belong. So mm -hmm. rook here, bishop to b1 would be my setup. Uh, also, with my rook on b1, I always have these little nasty ideas of uh, knight yeah, takes like f7. Yeah, I like on e1. I yeah. think it's more ple unpleasant and also... The it, feeling, yeah, yeah. the feeling is like you should always be careful about knight e6, knight f7, knight right. g5, knight e5 jumps and also after uh, rook e1, you can play knight e5, queen goes somewhere and then rook e2. Or rook e3, rook h3 ideas. Of, uh, yeah, uh, rover knight. ideas. Yeah. Okay, let's see what happened. Rook d1, bishop f8, knight f1. So a completely different approach by white. His idea that is he wants to put his knight from d2 to g3. He wants to play more positional chess oh, even than to e3. we are. <laughs> <laughs> even e3. Okay, e3. Where are you going? 
You're going to go h3 and knight g4? Whoa. Okay. C5. Bishop b5. Um, now, uh, the, the, the funny part is the classical chess players, would, like the Capablancas of the world, let's get really classical, would say that white's play is all wrong. Yeah. Absolutely. And All Bishop B3, wrong. Bishop B5. <laughs> because basically what you're doing is you're getting two um, uh, pass pawns on the queen side, but you're giving your opponent the center. So uh, I, I, I want to keep the, 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 the king safe, but what I really want to do, of course, is I want to activate my, 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 my center mass and usually your pawns mm -hmm. don't get there and d4 and d5 Even is going to be more disruptive. Even though it's kind of harder to move after f6, for example, d4 or e5, and yeah. but it is definitely an idea. Yeah, you're, you're, you're going in that direction to move up the board. Uh, c5, a6, wow, look at this. Uh, a2 is hanging in case of... Bishop uh, oh, Bishop B2 is hanging. Excuse me. Much more simple. Bishop B2. And black is, again, mm -hmm. he's very happy to grab a center pawn for a now flank. Now your idea is going to be... Even You'd be much easier to implement, isn't it? So, uh, uh, Justin, captured on C6, captured on C6, captured on B6, and I don't like the position. I, I, I think that black I have a feeling has Justin done very well. just wanted to be solid today. Mm, I'm not sure not having, this is having solid, the best though. tournament, but he's playing against, uh, against his opponent, like junior player, right? Right, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't want to lose it. Yeah. Um, I'm a little stunned by the move H5. I, it's not a terrible move or anything like that. Yeah. I'm just thinking that the knight on G4 it's not is doing it a, that's great? What, that was my first reaction. I was like, I wonder if knight on g4 is better or e5. Why are you forcing? Why are you forcing the knight to a better square? I'm, I might find myself attracted to moves like queen b7, bishop b5, a5. Maybe I mentioned it a moment ago. Maybe f6. Just to you know. I got the two bishops. I really like it. I, I like Black's position. Me too. Uh, okay, but now hmm. the knight has nice. actually strong. found itself on a really sweet outpost. Now your idea f6 won't work because g6 is uh, hanging. Wow. By the way, here, my, you know, my spidey sense would be tingling. If I was black, I would be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. My opponent has a dark square bishop. You never want to see sure. bishop, exactly. bishop come to f6. That yes, would be sir. like As I the, told you before, our generation needs to apologize, right? <laughs> right? Uh, whoa, uh, that's going in the wrong direction, isn't it? I mean, don't you want to go... How about F6, H6? Right? There. Don't you want to go in that? I mean, it's a it's a pity. Mm -hmm. Bobby Fischer teaches chess. <laughs> it's a pity you have a back rank problem because, you know, uh, these ideas, you know, come yeah. to your mind, except, oops, uh, Bobby mate. Fischer teaches chess. But checkmate. Queen D3, D4 must play. By the way, I think that that's a force move. If you allow bishop d4, just give it up. You're just, your bishop will be, resign. yeah, it's terrible. You're, but now your bishop, you're going to be a pawn down. Ooh. What? That's surprising. <laughs> the answer is blown away. <laughs> yeah, I'm really stunned by what's going on here. Because Andrew was just permitted to go into a bishop. So, by the way, mm -hmm. big shout out to our production team. They are Johnny on the spot. Bobby Fisher teaches chess, Begum, this and you could learn what a back rank. I will rank. make sure to read Check. this. <laughs> Thank no, you, no, 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 just look. <laughs> just look. Okay, let's. Oh my God. How many back rank? Okay, this is not really back rank, but it's the weakness of back rank. Too. Back rank mates, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's a one-trick pony. 
<laughs> okay, I can solve them in like half an hour, I guess, all of them, right? Because it's the same trap. Well, that's because you're a genius, but chess genius. But isn't that funny? I mean, oh my I was God. the 13th. I got Wait. this great gift. I got Bobby Fisher Cheech's chess. I, I, I'm going to be the world chess champion. Little, I, I thought you were being a little bit sarcastic about it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought once Every I read the is. world champion's book, I would become world champion. I would just inhale all of his knowledge. Dude's a one trick pony. <laughs> I mean, what? Crazy, crazy. We have another draw, too, as in the game between Luca and help me out with... Um, Dambasure? Again? Dambasure and Batsure. Easy for you to say. <laughs> uh, another draw, uh, as we have... Uh, this Nimzo Indian with F2, F3, what is it called? Uh, is it like a modern? Yeah, something mo modern, Nimzo, or something like that? I don't like know, that? but uh, it became popularized by a very dynamic player in the 90s, Alexei Shirov. I love he, Shirov. He's I know. A player. He did so much to popularize. By the way, he has a great book, Fire on the Board. Fire on the Board. Now, that is a book that is just really. Uh, commendable uh, mm -hmm. effort uh, and for sure. I have heard that uh, one of the reasons why he didn't become a world champion is that he exposed his uh, strategy in general himself and his style a lot. But it felt like it feels like he put his heart to that book. <laughs> yeah, well, true, true that. I would say the reason he didn't become a world champion is because he had two of the greatest chess geniuses who ever lived playing at the same time, and they were Anatoly Karpov and Gary Kasparov. No, I, I, <laughs> do, I do believe there, there are many other reasons. But, In general, I have heard this story. Right. It's, like, it's an interesting one. Uh, okay, it ends up like Luca had sacrificed this exchange for a couple of these pawns, and this is where where we, we saw, saw it. it and Luca was trying for something but no I mean these the, the rooks it's not that the rooks uh, materially speaking black isn't that badly off the problem is the rooks are so good I mean they're really good this you is you love rooks on the second yeah or yeah wow. the, you could That's just right. lose for the game uh, badly and the game that's strange. The game was agreed uh, to draw uh, here. Black cannot do anything. The problem is that they cannot attack B4 pawn. If you play rook B4 or yeah. rook B2 attacking B4 pawn, yes. then knight D5. And yes. you cannot kick the knight out of D5 as well. No, no. The knight is permanently anchored. Um, I suppose he just felt like black was going to go king, king, king. And more or less, there would be a kind of a stasis here. Uh, impossible for either player to break the. Mm -hmm. I think imbalance. I just stay king g3, king g4, and exactly. g6. Exactly, exactly. The knight stock, the rook stock. And then if knight, if king is on e5, most probably I do have ideas of like moving my knight. Actually, knight e7, we cannot take knight c6 and then right. attack. Most probably I cannot never reach this pawn. I shouldn't because knight gets trapped. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> but be careful. in general, I have like extra right. move coming there yeah. and coming back. Exactly. Okay, it looked to uh, my eyes to be a well-played game. Let's jump to the game of Aram and Elshan. This was the game when as we came in. We felt like uh, Elshan was definitely on the back foot. And then you talked about moving G pawn, and it seems like... It, Elshan did that as a kind of Elshan a desperate... Elshan listened to you. Well, it was a kind of a desperate measure, unfortunately. I mean, he is not a happy you camper. He's a pawn down. Do you think uh, there is a chance for him to hold it? I don't know. Holding, uh, this is really, really, really tough. So, for example, let's just, what do we say about pass pawns? Okay. Push them, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Push them, baby. <laughs> baby. Let's see those pass pawns get put. So what happens after c5? Well, we cannot play our rook here. That would Thank be you. a discovered oh. check. 
But otherwise, the problem is that if I you move it somewhere else, I gotta go to the D. Knight C six, Knight A six is winning the pawn. Knight C seven. Knight C seven. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, uh, I discovered Jack, and but Knight takes A six. It has a problem, winning. right? I'm I can play B three. Okay. And then hope that my the pawn is strong enough enough to. Hold a draw, and also knight is not placed perfectly, but knight b4 can be the next move. Exactly. Um, oh, knight b4 actually is on knight, rook d4. Rook e4 check. takes text and b2. Here we go. There's I'm your queening. counterplay. There's your counterplay, baby. Um, I don't know. It, it's, it's some extra pawns for white, so let, let, let me play devil's advocate a bit. I'm thinking about Bobby Fisher's background. I got it on the brain. <laughs> C6 check, king C8, it's not me, but you know what I mean. I'm thinking about Or you can play, rook E6 is a great move because uh, that's what you should do, right? Rook, rook and games, yeah, exactly. Balls, right? And now you're kind of threatening maybe rook B6, C6, rook B8. That one's a nice one, so let's just put that on the board for just a moment. And uh, we're going to make a very bad move. On very H8, bad move. let's yeah. go. And Bobby Fisher will be <laughs> grateful that you're, we studied his book. <laughs> there we have it. Uh, Elshon in trouble. Brandon Jacobson and um, Semyon. Uh, we left it. I was saying a five. That's the jabbing move. You need to do uh, a little bit. Uh, of, I think the simplest way of saying it is provocation. You, as black, you don't want white to just... Hold everything on yeah, black squares. You know, on a good day, I don't know. The king could come to c3, maybe menaces a c4. I like the move bishop a4. Maybe the move b3, you know, it's something you want to keep in advance. I was thinking of rook d2, but the problem is that rook b4 is possible. Yeah, and this and was... And you want to just be like... I want to get my king, I don't know, like... Bishop b5. This would be more or less my dream, right? Mm -hmm. I can't get anything better than this. I yeah. mean, this is this is my dream. When I play the move b3, I have it in mind, uh, Vegan, mm -hmm. that my opponent's going to always get in the move a4 and harass me unless I make a big commitment and play the move a4 myself. Yeah, that's the, that was my idea. Probably I thought uh, he can play a4 here and then put the king on c3 still. Correct. And then rook d2 actually has a rook. And, and it feels like if I exchange the rooks, my position should be winning. Winning is always strong, but that's a, that's a isn't <laughs> it? The British have that beautiful expression. Is it better? <laughs> uh, my mother's British, so I have license to speak. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I uh, lived in the United States for 50 years and speaks with a British uh, accent today. I, love it. I know. It's crazy, right? So, A4, rook c3, I feeling, and I feeling. Brandon's idea, actually. Yes. If you take on b3, yes. I'll take with the bishop. And, and then I have a pass pawn on a. So you. you uh, Anything you can do, I can do better, kind of thing. So you. A4. Well, okay. It's too much, isn't it? Then I would like to make a draw. Too much. I, is in, in Semyon's uh, position, if you go back to this moment right here, I think black is worse only because of the split pawns. Put that pawn on b4, and I don't That's think fine. we have anything yeah. to talk about. But because of the split pawns, I think black is trying to make a draw. And if we do, if he achieves it, he, success, he succeeded. So I don't know if Brandon uh, did well with that move b3. Let's, let's go. Where would you like to take us? Uh, let's Aksha? go to Akshat's leaders. <gasps> you know, this. did he make the time control? Because actually, when we he left did, it... He did, actually. He just made uh, move 42. When yeah. we left it, he had only one minute. Right. This is this is a very funny game. Well, funny game. Uh, <laughs> a funny move. A strange move that uh, neither Begum or I could grasp. But and yes, that was so the you, move you knight b1. You told me in the Sicilian when you, your opponent plays g4 and a, a, he, it's planned to play g5, right? Yep. You play knight d7, and it's like that too. 
He played A4, and Lenderman's like, why wouldn't we just put go back? <laughs> well, that was a, this move for me, knight B1, that is That's a real uh, uh, head scratcher. Yeah. And I think it was all based on the game, uh, what happened to the game, because, you know, oftentimes you, you, you see these forcing lines, everything that's an attack, capture, capture, attack. These forcing lines are a very, very narrow path. And I think mentally, Akshat foresaw this position, foresaw the move queen e5, and just thought, I'm doing great, stop. This is one of the most spectacular defensive moves I've seen in quite some time, in the sense that we love double attacks. Those are the 95% 90, of all tactics are double attacks. This one is a triple. This is an amazing tactical sequence that just finished. The move queen d8 defends the rook. That's tactic number one. It attacks the knight on b1, but it pins the pawn yeah. To the queen, and so it does three things. Also attacks d6. d6. So it's just like it's an amazing move, and Akshat in I time trouble uh, ended up playing knight c3. Now, if you just go back a move before you played the move queen e5, I could have taken. Yeah, taken. We would have reached the exact same position as the players achieved in mm -hmm. the game. But I extracted the ball on C6. So we can definitely say the move queen B8 was missed. Yes. Absolutely. And also, like, knight B1, I, I was playing with Parham. Mm -hmm. So last round after Abu Dhabi. What's his last name? Mm -hmm. Yes. From, from Iran. Iran 2600. Thank from, you. Uh, yeah, Maxid Lu. Parham Maxid Lu. And That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> and? And I was uh, white pieces, so okay. he's a strong opponent of anyways. Of course, 2700. Yeah, it's not like I lost the game because I played knight b1, but I really did lose the game because I went back with my knight on b1. And he did the similar thing as Lenderman did. Mm -hmm. He made uh, like moves which put problems like and then I while I was trying to solve those my knight couldn't move and it was under that's attack that's that's he played a great game mm -hmm. and it's just I I got my lesson okay <laughs> you just don't go that sometimes long. some you know it the does great maybe work but in such situations when everything is hanging mm -hmm. it's better to keep the knight close to the center exactly well as the great Bobby Fisher himself says sometimes you're the teacher, and sometimes you're the student. <laughs> and, uh, there you go. Unfortunately, most of the times. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're young. Look, you've got this bright future. You've got lots of losses ahead of That's you to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rook A2, Alex Lenderman. He's a pawn up. He's, he's mistreating one of our tournament leaders here as he is really enjoying his extra pawn, and I and rook think... rook d5 is not working, unfortunately, because of bishop g3 move. Rook d5 is not working because the bishop takes g3. Um, and rook, uh, if you check on d8, I can just put king. And if you check on g8, you just move the king, right. So this is the current position. The knight is hanging, the rook is hanging, and I am loath. I hate... I yeah. always hate to walk into these pins. And yes, I sir. Think, and funny thing is that if you yeah. even check on d8, Please. your knight doesn't have any good squares right. to go. Well, we've we've spoken about that for, uh, throughout the broadcast, and it's a, it's a, it's um, a word I I take from the Japanese game of Go, and that is tsuji. Tsuji is a Japanese uh, word where a move that is played dominates yeah. the opposing. Uh, it's interesting that when the knights and the bishops, their interaction, when the bishop is two squares away from the knight, it kind of dominates the knight. Yeah. So if you think about it, this knight's moves, what you were saying, it doesn't have very many squares. And if you have to go, for example, to a backward square, 
like this. Yeah, so is it just lost, by the way? It could be just Akshat lost. Akshat is so upset, and he just and played rook d5. But can I just take on g3? I think you can. I think your move will take, the bishop takes g3. Um, I believe he's hoping against hope that... Uh, but th this should be easy winning. But is it? Uh, go yeah, ahead. Lenderman just took on g3. Aksha took hg h takes g3. And rook b5. Right. But and king g2 or... He played rook d7. I, do, I don't like that. Rook d7. Ooh, Aksha, you're absolutely right. You just, you know, uh, you can just see... Uh, this is one of the things I want to say that I missed ab about the whole pandemic is literally chess moved online. Yeah. We couldn't go anywhere, so we're sitting at home. We're watching the players play online, and mostly you can't play classical chess yeah. online. It's very, very I hard to do that. I never played any tournaments. Right, but Blitz and Rapid you could, and everybody's playing Blitz and Rapid, but when you look in person, and the two competitors are you know, side by side, if you will, against each other, you can see the expression of action. <laughs> Pounding the table in disgust. When it's online, you lose all of those tells, mm -hmm. that feeling yeah. of like, I'm winning. And uh, Lenderman definitely Absolutely. two pawns up. Now tell me, uh, I'll make the following. I, I hate my position, I'm two pawns down, but I want to put my rook on c7. But the problem I want is to put that my if pawn I move on f4. my pawns, then I still can improve my king's position. That was what I wanted to ask you. How are you going to? How are you going to? Imp I mean, you're you're two extra pawns, so you think, oh, well, this should be easy. No, I, I do believe it's not easy, yes, sir. But it's I not do, easy. I do believe it's not easy, I especially do. rookie and games are the most tricky, one of the most exactly. tricky in games out there. Right. But. I, I do believe it should be winning. Too. I do, I do, I do, I do. I think. Rook b2 uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Rook b2, rook c7, and rook c2. Rook b2. Because rook I'm C7, holding your king as well. Rook c2. And I'm going g5, to. g5, most probably. g5, good. And I. If I had left my king on. F1, I'm not a happy camper. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I have another idea. Instead Please. of G5, I could play H5 and put the king on E8. And you okay. cannot attack none of my, for example, king F8, king E3, king E8. Right. That could be another idea. And this is, a, this is essentially this position for what it's worth. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm a happy camper. I'm two pawns down. Is White's ideal. Yeah. Because if you think about it, the three versus two somehow yeah two pawns are miracle. holding three yeah, pawns a little bit miracle exactly right? yeah. that's why I feel like I should play G uh, G five that was your your was your initial instinct yeah. was to play G five maybe just I don't know you just get this position and then you just figure out mm -hmm. uh, what your next steps are maybe H five H four also also H five H four because I like it I'm tethered to my F pawn yeah. and. And if you try to uh, win my H pawn, most probably I can't. I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to go. Oh, you mean something like check, check. Yeah. And then eventually I force you to allow me. To attack my H pawn. Well, in this case, mm, I'm going to go just check. check king e5 and rook. No, then I'm f4 doing... maybe. Yeah. Can I protect my? Well, okay. Text, it's text. a little bit. Rook c3, king. But this should be winning. My c pawn should should win it. Yeah, I, I would. My I king would is too active. Agreed, agreed. Uh, Lendeman, two pawns to the good. We have determined after. Here it comes. Are you ready for this? <laughs> one of the great books, we just talked about Fire on Board. One of the great books was Grandmaster Preparation yeah. by Grandmaster Lev Poligayevsky. And Lev Poligayevsky had the Poligayevsky variation, the knight or Sicilian, an unbelievably, ridiculously <laughs> ultra-sharp <laughs> opening yes. in defense. You don't even want to go there. I mean, madness is uh, the end game in that uh, variation. Anyway, Lev, he loved analyzing. 
and he would come to these positions. His output was prodigious. And then at the end of his output, he would say, after painstaking analysis, <laughs> drop, <laughs> you know, like this. But this word, painstaking, like he did, he had to put his whole, you know, uh, Dostoevsky, he had yeah. to put his whole uh, life uh, into uh, his work. Mm -hmm. it, it was glorious reading, painstaking analysis. And so far, <laughs> players are following our ideas. After rook d7, rook b2, rook c7, rook c2, two. king g2 was played. On the board. I wonder if Lenderman is going to play g5 or not. You know, it's funny. Uh, he played just c4. C4. You know, sometimes... He's like, never mind, I'm not going to decide yet. Sometimes you just push him. You just push I was afraid if I push it, then I cannot push my other pawns. But ah. his idea is to play rook c1 and then uh, get the pawn on c2 and then just try to move as the king. King f8, king e8, king d8. Right. And That's then how... You do get there and then eventually you do have g5 and h5 also in the pocket. Uh, for Akshat, who came into today's round, one of the players uh, tied for the lead, this is painful, this is painful. Let's yeah. jump to the game of Brandon. And also, we have a result in yes, group we do. A. Aram successfully made his eighth stroke. What are you? Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping the for the... Oracle of Delphi over here? <laughs> you, you, you predicted uh, perfect I'm proud uh, of myself, result. yeah, sir. Yeah? Uh, jumping into the game of Brandon for a moment, because we were thinking that um, the yeah. game was more or less balanced. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, Semyon, wow, uh, okay. That decision is interesting. Oh, Semyon first of all... He's not a, taking the pawn too. Right, uh, first of all, I am taking on b3 regardless of, you know, you, a, b, let, let, let's get a, b, a, b on the board, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, I'm surprised. Somehow this pawn on e5 feels like I a, really like it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Don't you think he just created for himself another weakness uh, on e6? Yeah, I think so. If you take a b right now, boom. Wow. Okay, we have a very These interesting... These players are very ambitious. Truly. I don't uh, like blacks. I don't like blacks moves. You don't, but I'm... Why would I create... Uh, so you could... But yes, or you have it... It's just too far away. My king is close. Okay, but uh, let's put it like this. One of the things that I, I love about chess, I love about chess, is this idea that it's a battle of ideas. You have your ideas, I have my ideas. Let's see, who is this possible? Whose ideas are better? Now, uh, before you say bad, 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 Black is making a statement. Black statement is, I have a potential pass pawn mm -hmm. on the king side. I have one on the queen side already. You have already a pass pawn, and but your your your, your passers are doubled. Yeah. So black is trying to say, my pass pawns are better than yours. Whether he's right or wrong, mm -hmm. that's not the issue. Yeah. That's what the battle of ideas is all about. And I love it. Now tell me why you think it's bad what Black mm -hmm. has done. Okay, before I say it, we need, <laughs> to know, we need to know that they were having time scramble here. Oh, were they? So they One just minute. made move 40. Okay, so, gotcha. Okay. So now, it's hard to judge when you have time scramble, right? Right. right. But I feel like um, please tell us how you feel. White's position is better because I'm playing a4 and next move a6. Okay, a4, and a6. I, I get feel it. like my pass pawn is um, further, more uh, like uh, further to, advanced. Yeah, further Absolutely. advanced than yours. For example, you cannot really play c4 because not, uh, king d4. I always win your pawn there. Okay. And if you play g4, weirdly, I can play g4. If okay, so let g4, me play h4. H4 then maybe. A6. What you want? Hmm. I wanted to go g4. Still king f4. I think king f4 is enough. Yeah. This is the battle of ideas, mm -hmm. right? 
this is your idea. Correct. So I, I was thinking after h4, pro probably I should play h3, but after g4, I wanted to play king f4. Uh, sorry. That was my uh, idea. A6. Instead oh. of a6. Okay, h3, g4, king f4. Mm. Sorry, g3. <laughs> yeah, so you're making so many bad moves. Yeah. No, I'm not. You're like, sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, I can take on a g4. If you play h3, I can play maybe rook c2, bishop g2, king, rook h8, hold on, hold rook h2. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bishop d5. Okay. Give me a move. Okay, Give wait. Move. Okay, look. What? A4? After that, yes. I'm playing this. I can take it. If you play h3, rook c2, rook okay. c8, rook h8, then rook h2. I am two pawns up. Wait, 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 wait. You get to play your moves. I get to play my moves. Then my idea is to play this. Ah. And but now. there is a problem, right? You can play this. <laughs> right. And then I will, I'm forced to play this. Ah, and then if I make it me. this, this, kind then you're of the happy. game's over. Then you're happy. You tricked me. Um, That's my idea. <laughs> and, and, and what were you saying, sorry, about this one? This one, and then bishop this, g2. Right. And then a6. Okay. Now this one, this one strikes me as... A7? Crazy. I, I'm not sure. Because like, your I rook should... is... You know what I want to say yeah. is like an if entombed. If I play a7, c4. Yeah. <gasps> the, the, the rook a8. No, let me get rid of that a pawn. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, rook a8 here. I'll, uh, uh, that a pawn bothers me. Ah, uh, I'm not making it. Yeah, I got I some trickies. I cannot just do these things, right? Hmm, you have your tricks, right? I have my tricks. I agree with you. <laughs> uh, it's one of those things that you're right. It's in time wrong. trouble to make the judgment, and it's very, very awkward to assess whose past pawns are more dangerous. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, scary parts about uh, the double A pawns is precisely that the yeah. doubled A pawns. Sometimes, you know. If one of the pawns were on b6 or b2, it'd be a completely different yeah. matter. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if, in this case, if Brandon has misjudged the ending in the sense that, like yourself, Brandon probably saw his pawn on e5 as this yeah. great stalwart of uh, a tower of strength, and his king is being a little bit better than this kind of passive black king. But looking deeper into the position, it's not easy. H4, G4, G3 is a tactic. Oh, actually, maybe Please. I have another idea. I'm for example, sure you do. Uh, for example. By the way, we have another yep. result. Uh, Let's go. Sure. No, no, no. Go ahead. Show, show, show us. Uh, A4, G4. A, no, 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 no. Because then King F4 in your yeah. happy. But go like H4. still, after G4, I have Bishop E2 idea. Okay. And if you play. A4, H4. H4, I still can play bishop e2. Yes, of course you can. I mean, and, and absolutely. Uh, in this case, you're kind of giving up on, I don't know, uh, you're, mm -hmm. you know. No, it's not easy, yeah, sir, but right. maybe it's better than what I did. Fair, fair. Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, it, it's a very difficult position. We're going to let the players uh, it would boil <laughs> over it. We I do see. have another result in the game between Mishra and a. Yeah, Sassy. Uh, when we left it, we thought after, after Rook H4. A8, somewhere around these parts, we thought the move Rook A8 coming was going to give mm -hmm. Mi Mishra easy equality. Oh. And, well, that, that was an interesting trade of pawns how that occurred, and not too much happened, uh, Vegan. We, they just, wow. They just agreed to a draw. Funny, funny moment to agree to a draw. Was E5 played? I don't think so. No, I don't I, think I so didn't, either. I, I think that. I think it's I just. I think they must have They were it. analyzing something must have worked, exactly. or they just pushed the pawn, you know? Like, right, right. Like, uh, oftentimes, uh, the, the players, they don't put the king in the 
and they're analyzing mm -hmm. and yeah, they're yeah. Like that kind of thing. So a draw in that match, uh, Darush? It's a very exciting game between Nikos and Darush, which are former St. Louis students, by <laughs> right. the way. And again, uh, Nicholas is coming into this round, one of the players tied for first. Uh, when we left it, we kind of thought that he was struggling a little bit with black. Maybe his struggles are over. I'm looking at the position. It's What's the problem? I'm going to play g5, hg, hg. I'm going to start trading, trading off more and more pawns. And for Nicholas, this would be a, a great result. It kind of keeps him in that first place mm -hmm. mix, especially uh, with I think it's a action. good uh, result for Darius as well. Don't you think so? Well, because he was pressing. He was pressing, but like he's having such a like uh, roller coaster event, and sometimes mm -hmm. like it's really it's like fine. At least Draws you're ending fine. your like, uh, tournament. Uh, tournament. Right. Uh, three, uh, two versus one. And in this particular case, the two, g3 and h4 versus f7, I want to say has zero chances of winning. Like, it's, it's unbelievable. This is your best pawn against the g3 yeah. and h. Uh, g and h pawns versus f, f pawn. F, f7. The you defender just, is just great. Just move. Yeah, when you're just fine. When I was fine. a kid, I, was, I had that pawn, and then I moved it. Oh, no. And then I lost the game, and my coach was like, you need to just Dang remember, God. just don't... I was a kid. I understand. Yes, sir. I understand. I, we've been there. We've all been there. One thing that's very interesting is imagine white has an f4 pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I have f4, g3, and h5, mm -hmm. let's just say. And I'm going to give you a pawn, a black pawn. So you're black, you're defending. Where will you put the three versus two? Where would you put the black pawn in hand? What is the best defensive setup of three How versus two? H6, F7? It Can I play F6, F7? <laughs> I was wondering. I was yeah. thinking of that. Yeah. Because that there was are some structures when uh, you have F6, F7, H7, or H6 pawns. H7 pawn is better than uh, your HG and H pawn Yeah. in some cases. Victor Korchnoi taught me that yeah. in a three versus two, the best defensive setup is double the F pawns. Here we go. Ah, I'm so you smart. learned that on your own. <laughs> but the doubled F pawns, because if you think about it, white with the three pawns, at some point he's going to go H4, G4, F4. Then he's going to go F5, G5. And that doubled F pawn trades itself mm -hmm. off, and then it's waiting for you to play G6, mm -hmm. and it trades itself exactly. off, and then it's a draw. So uh, this game is going to be a draw. Uh, we think Darush is going to be a draw, and... By the way, we, we're missing our uh, interviews because we're not getting that many uh, wins, wins today. Uh, today. It exactly. seems like uh, today is a slow draw day fest. for the yeah, <laughs> draw draw fest. Fest. Uh, We got uh, Brandon and Semyon. By the way, the pawn is here uh, on, uh, on A4. A4. I want to ask you a quick question, if you don't mind. If I play the move C4, so the idea was to stop you from playing bishop g2. Oh. If you play king d4, just saying, just saying, and if I play h4, Let's, what, 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 what's yeah, the story? Yeah, you're on time. I cannot take on c4. That was my question. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so you're tricky. <laughs> and well, then the idea is to play rook f8, and I can still not take on c4 because rook g4, g3. You know, we rook saw. Rook form is a check. Yeah, we saw those uh, types I, of. I wonder if white is in trouble. Or <laughs> 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 well, that's that's one of those. Uh, we have what we call in chess these cold shower moments, where. You know, it's hot and heavy. The that the fight has been great. You just made the time control. Yeah. Whew. And you then made start the time thinking. control. And then as you start thinking and you kind of calm down, calm down, you come to this quiet <laughs> realization. Your death. You're dead busted. Oh, and it's no. the cold shower feeling oh, of like, 
Where it's did one I of go the wrong? Worst feelings in the world because you're like, <laughs> okay, I feel like my position is not that great, but right. like uh, if I survive, I have this trick, this trick, and then right. suddenly you survive, and you're like, wait a second. It's terrible. I, I've got I no do? tricks. Exactly. I got nothing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So this could be a cold shower moment for Brandon as he realizes he hasn't uh, saved the day. Now, going to the game of We have many rook moment. endings today. Yeah, Exciting. it is a, a day for rook endings. By the way, I liked your idea of uh, slurping that mm -hmm. pawn on a6. Uh, Armand... And then but I think so Armand didn't thing. see the idea of rook e6, rook b6, which was your mm. idea and so strong. It's controlling Maybe. everything. Well, for the moment, he does have this awesome. I mean, king. that is, oh. That, that is should a, win. That, sh that king That is just win. such a great Absolutely. king. Absolutely. But how is he escorting his pawns precisely? As so, a 6 king b8, so, f6. Maybe F6, B2, Okay, tell C6. me which movie you like. F6 immediately? Yeah, let's play F6, F6 immediately. immediately. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to just play No, B2. you're trying to trick me with Rook E3. That's the only trick you have. <laughs> well I, spotted. I am indeed trying to trick Bacon with Rook E3 check. Yes. I'm just wondering. Yeah. Rook, rook B1? Rook B1, get out of the trick. Get out of my dirty, rotten idea. I am wondering, what if I walk in your trick? Like, c6, rook mm. e3. Yes. Text, text, queen, b, b1, queen. Yes. And then c7. Wow. If you play, for example, queen a2 check, I play king d6, the king d6 check and Discover queen. Discover check yeah. and queen. But I think uh, sometimes you study too many uh, studies <laughs> and you forget the queen is a really good piece. I do. Uh, yeah, I don't think you want to go thing. here. Yeah. But I so do like... I have to I start like, with c6. No, go, go, go for it. I, I do like uh, rook b1. It just, uh, I don't know, rook d2? Yeah, c6. Okay. c6. Now, Maybe I think even you're like you're winning. Yeah. I do. Just I think make you're a simple <laughs> move. Ah, simple chess. Yeah, two, Keep two it simple. pawns are just too strong in this I position. I think so too. Uh, I think Elshon is likely to lose this game. Brandon, again, this. Yeah, H4 and he has played, played that h4. I didn't know whether to include the move c4, maybe after the move a6, uh, g4. But I like. A moment I like ago, bishop you bishop e2. e2. I like the moment you not came Not only with... it's like protecting against g4, but it's protecting against rook f3. After rook f8, which is a great uh, like open file. open file for black, they suddenly didn't have much. No, there's no bit. Uh, we like to say the business squares are all protected. The business squares on an open file be being f1, f2, f3 in this particular case are all... Nicely I protected. really like bishop e2 move. Yeah, I do too. With the idea of playing a6 as well. I definitely... And then I can play h3, bishop g4, worst case. And then That's you, a good I'm blockade, like, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm not winning, but I'm not losing for sure as well. Uh, when we left it, Akshat, uh, you know, we, we were watching him as he's just like in this, oh, this very, very painful situation. He comes into this round... Uh, scoring very, very well. He was um, tied for the first, but at this moment he's two pawns down. I have a question for you. Can I go? No, I can't go on a rampage. Uh, the rampage was king of four, right? Rook takes, king here, and I'm dreaming Nigel of... Short's idea is not working because no. of F... I can even play F4, I guess. Can I just play F4? F4. Wow. Okay, that... Is a I surprise bet king f8, move. king e8 is working, but like, how about f4? f4, wow. Um, now I'm a little bit confused. Uh, if you take c2? And just simple chess, c2. And king h6. Uh, um, I can check rook h2, king g5, and then king, king f8. Is this so clear, though, uh, Begum, for now you? Now you came back. King yeah. e8. 
Um, I'm just not a... a Team D8? Yeah. I, maybe you're still winning, but... Rook E2 check? Yeah. I, it, it, it has the feeling, for me, of confusion. I don't know if it... If, King D7. Yeah. Maybe it's just still... I know. Uh, I could do everything without F4, but I'm just like... Right. Me, being me. <laughs> being mean. Uh, I, I rejected it for another reason as well, and uh, that other reason was just simply I didn't believe that uh, it was enough here. Yeah, King F8 um, is simply... It should be winning. Exactly. Just run away. But that, wait. That, that away. Then I can take on H7. Take on H7. I think F4 is a good move, yeah, so now I am looking yeah, back. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it is. It is, because... But after F4, you can play G4, which is a very interesting move. And then I can play King F8, yeah, it makes sense. Mm. Mm. Uh, two extra pawns. There are some Bad puzzles news. like that. In the end, you yeah. should play like F4, yeah. so King doesn't come to F6, and then right. you can just play C2. And right. Like Yes, like exactly. That. Yeah, yeah. Probably uh, it's not the most precise one. <laughs> but hey, but if it's effective and it Did he play wins, king f4? No, that's me. That okay. was my... Uh, Unfortunately, I cannot see... I was, trying to, I was trying to mix it up and, and uh, you know, that's one of the things I think that people misunderstand also about uh, the sport of chess. And I, I use that word deliberately, the sport of chess. I'm losing. End of story. You're winning. End of story. I cannot give up. Mm -hmm. I must do everything in my power to resist. Absolutely. And to make your life as difficult as yeah. possible, to, to, to put every obstacle in your way. If you answer all of the puzzles, mm -hmm. yeah. well done. So don't give up. Resistance <laughs> is very important Absolutely. when it comes to any sports. Absolutely. You, it is your job when you're in a bad position, a losing position, doesn't matter. You have to try your hardest. And I think that is what being a champion is all about. It's not just like winning brilliantly and being a great player and doing all. No, it's about saving those yeah. really hard, tough games. I think it, it's uh, one of the like moments that shows why you're great. Exactly, exactly. And uh, that's an important uh, a quality uh, to have this idea that you're really going to do your best and you're going to resist. Okay, where would you like to take us? He did play King F4, yes. Okay, he d I mean... He knows, Akshat knows that if he That's the only if he just waits around, uh, eventually, you know, Alex is gonna play here and he's I gonna just wonder, can king. I just play F it's weird, but like can I just play H six? I think it's the same thing. I'm still doing my mm -hmm. best to uh, mix it up. I liked your uh, rook takes F two check mm -hmm. by the way how many pawns did you win <laughs> i liked your f4 because the whole idea king f6 yeah. f takes g3 check is yeah, that's but that's yes bad. sir there's another Please. point after f4 i can take on c3 take if i on take c3. on g3 yes rook g3, there are some positions when uh actually white can hold because king right. uh, like for example if it's like H5, King, G5, Right. it's already their draw. Right. It's so weird, but it's one of the few situations when you can make yeah. a draw with white. Unfortunately, this Pawn isn't is on one H7. of... Yeah, this isn't one of those drawing positions. Yeah. I know what you mean uh, of that mechanism. And yeah. I did play on an Olympia team mm -hmm. um, in Moscow in 1994. And Alex Yermolinsky was two pawns down, two connected pass pawns down in his game. And, you know, we had given him up for lost, and his opponent allowed one of those blocked oh. positions, and he saved this absolutely lost game. And it was a real, it was a very, very important half point that he yeah. saved for the team. King f4 on the board, rook takes, uh, uh, king g4, but regardless of whether or not this is one of those uh, drawn positions. You're right. Again, as as um, white, you're doing your absolute best to make uh, mm -hmm. it possible, make it as difficult as possible for your opponent. 
By the way, did we look at G4? No, that's what I was going to tell you. Okay, like G4 please. is another idea. Right. The, the thing is that if I play King F8, yes. now you're just taking on. Well, now I'm happy, C3. right? I yeah. find I got rid of a very important thing. That's why I, I wasn't fan of C4 and C3 idea, to be honest. It like felt here. like he had to play. He had to play G five. Yeah, G five, H six, King F eight. You know, Dvoretsky the, uh, wouldn't approve. You don't rush. Don't right? rush. King F four. By the way, let me just uh, put this on the board. Refresh. Where are you, Akshat? You're at top. King F four. Sorry. Once again, we've Akshat been looking at rook two kings. minutes against forty minutes. I wonder. After G four. Uh, it's getting tricky again, right? It is. Because I, I have a question. Is it is it even winning? It doesn't nah. seem like it. No, I mean I can always you know bail with a check, right? But I can go uh, rook. you're losing your f four pawn. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm oh. losing my pawns. Yes, sir. What? I think we're just. Am I blind? I think I am blind too. Like, why would I play f four? Why wouldn't we just go back to d two or b two? Like knight. Rook B two. Yeah, exactly. Like and what what we are doing? I think Rook D two is better because if you play King H six, I just can play C two, and then still I have uh, like Rook to H two check. Yeah, and Rook H two check also to run away. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think I think that's how you win. Really <laughs> okay, <laughs> Not but the I'm way probably going to take this pawn and Rook D seven, and then King G G seven. It's okay, yes, sir. I will give you this luxury of putting your King of the beautiful square. Can I just be very passive and play just rook f7, king g7? And yeah. Yes, you can. And that should be enough. Uh, wow. Uh, it's so rare for us. It We're is. so used to getting so many guests. <laughs> Uh, we're having so many victories. To have so many draws is a bit of a surprise. But with this number of draws already in the books, let's just take a look at our standing, Absolutely. shall we? Absolutely. So and Group A. It has been a slow day, but not for Rana. <laughs> hey, Rana not at all. Is, uh, won his game against Ilya. Lickety who split. Who and now he's clear first. That with is insane. Five, with right. five points. And then tie for second between Benjamin Bogg John Burke and Nicholas Theodore, who are playing their games. Right now, we expect Nicholas to draw, to draw, to draw, to tie with Runek. Also, Benjamin, Benjamin and John, they are playing each other, which means they will make a, a good, draw and well, they will have five points. At least we're expecting. Well, potentially, uh, if anyone's going to win it, it's going to be Benjamin. But uh, in the uh, A group, Benjamin is a pawn up. We do expect the game to be a draw, which would mean that for tomorrow, it's all, uh, it's all up for grabs. Yasser's yes, loving it. I don't know about the playoffs. <laughs> I mean, I, that, that uh, I closing ceremony dinner. Yes, you know, sir, it's fine. Is it? You will make it. You will? <laughs> I'm worried. I'm worried. <laughs> I'm and excited uh, about tie breaks. I hope yeah. we'll have tie breaks in, in both one. sections. In both playoffs. <laughs> uh, and what about the Group B? Uh, group I, B, so far, Andrew Hong is the solo leader of the tournament who ended his game with Justin in a draw. And he has five and a half points. But we still have tie for second with Akshay Chandra and Samuel Lamanos of five points. But so far, we think Akshay is losing his game, unfortunately, and Lamasov most probably will make a draw. Right, so, so again, everything to play first. for. Yeah, 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 and maybe then maybe some, uh, Aksha it just depends. In, in, uh, in, in trouble for sure. And before we sign off or do any of those things, we have some really, really nice announcements. The Absolutely. first of which is the Fisher Random Tournament is coming up, uh, and it promises to be Fan Fantastic. I know the field. <laughs> I got an advanced view, but advanced peak. And let me tell you, it is incredibly it's strong. One like of ridiculously the, strong. Not even one of the, but it's many 
world best chess players. Of course. Basically. Oh, it's without exciting. question. Yasser is excited to bully them, by the way. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> because we are starting it with ultimate moves. Exactly. Uh, the ultimate moves is one of those uh, events where it's trash talking. Trash talking is not just allowed. <laughs> It's encouraged. Required. <laughs> required. It's required, not encouraged. Come, come, come with your insults and uh, you better be Break ready. You know, I got in a great shot. Yeah. Uh, Levon Aronian, he was on the opposing team. Don't yeah. ask me why. Somehow I got recruited yeah. onto Rex's team, which included Gary Kasparov and... Um, Magnus Carlsen. Oh my God. Magnus Carlsen. Wow. That day, Magnus, or yeah, that day, Magnus Carlsen had lost a playoff against Ding Lorin in the Sinkfield Cup. He had lost the playoff. The players were rotating. In comes mm -hmm. Magnus, mm -hmm. and he sits down and he's playing, and Levon Aronian shouts, Magnus! This is the best position you had the whole day because he had just lost a Dean yeah. Laurent. He's my teammate, Magnus. Yeah. So what did I immediately answer with? Immediately answer. Like literally split millisecond. Okay. Here it comes. At least he's still playing. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning he got to the playoff yeah. and you didn't. <laughs> and Anish went, ouch! That's, that and Anish it was on Levon's team. He went, ouch! They got destroyed. Yeah, baby, you got to get it. So you got to get in those jabs. And That's going to be lovely to, uh, to watch and to right. play. Exactly. Well. We're so excited about the tournament. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. And by the way, Gary... Uh, uh, he, he gets into it, too. Like, oh, Gary's a competitor. He, why, he, he, anything chess? Why didn't you play this? Why didn't you play? He still got that competitive zeal. Again, as we get ready to sign off, we do think, and we have been so wrong. We've yeah. left, Benjamin was completely winning or losing, and he ends up winning. I, I mean, know. it's like crazy. And finally, we, he has a position, <laughs> which is like, Predictable. Predictable. We hope. We hope we're right when we say uh, John Burke is going to draw this one. We hope. Well, did we really look at this? No, this is a. It has changed. It's changed. Right? Well, it was bishops of opposite colors. Oh. oh look at this tricky. Wait, tricky. he didn't play g5. Wow. We're, we're saying he needs to push g5 and f4. Correct. That is a surprise. And, ah, uh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. That is crazy. I mean, Both of the players, they find a way to fight. Right. Where mm -hmm. we feel like there's nothing. Correct. We thought this, we were giving up this game for drawn, but with these double pawns, uh, there's, this chances, let's put it that way. I think this chances for Darush, at the moment, very active king, right? We do have ideas of check and king mm -hmm. f3. I would be scared with white. I just don't like it. It's just unpleasant that like king comes to f3 or like h3, g2. Okay, let, 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 let's do something concretely, right? So I do want to give you a check. And mm -hmm. in the immortal words of, of Nikolai Minev, gift me your pawn. <laughs> Can I play King H three? I am just yes. wondering. Yes, yes. I, I I I looked it. And then King I looked G2. it up. It's in the rule book. You can. Good. Good. And Rook C two. Rook C two check. King G three. Rook F two. Rook F two. And let me try to gobble up your mm. pawns. Should I get greedy and play King Rook F five? If Rook F five. Rook F five. E four. Rook A five. Rook a5, g4. g4, king g3, take it. Rook a4. I think we're going to make a draw. Take it. King g4. <laughs> and I think we'll probably uh, call that the day yeah. on that one. Just a uh, last, last uh, gander at this all-important game between Akshat and um, Lenderman. Akshat, two pawns down, but 
somehow, you know, he's doing his darndest bestest. He's got a very active king, a very active rook. I think the material should be winning for black. Yeah. You're, you've got good instincts on this. I mean, you've I been uh, predicting the, the results. <laughs> so I'm not going to argue with you, Megan. What's going to happen in this game? I have a feeling after rook f8, king g8, rook f7, king g7, it should be over. So uh, rook f8. Oh, you're, you're going king g5 back. Yeah, of course. Then I'm not, going, I'm not going to play king uh, g8 then, yeah, so. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I don't, I, funnily it's enough, easy. exactly. Funnily enough, I didn't have to waste a tempo, waste a tempo taking this all-important c-pawn, but keeping up that um, initiative, I want to say, it's so, so strange. So I have to play c2 here? C2. Is it a good try? Threatening a perpetual. Oh, never mind. I have to play C f C2 immediately instead of Rook F8. C2 immediately. Um, okay, now you're... Uh, now I'm talking. Yeah. Rook F8, King G5, King G7. Gotcha. Now oh, you've got... Finally, my brain is working. Oh. <laughs> but it was a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. I, I, I mean... And still, C2, King G5 is uh, possible. Exactly. But then uh, I can play Rook e7, king h6, king g8. I'll catch up with you. c2. I think c2, king g5 is the best try. But then what happens here, sorry? King f8 back. King f6? And king f6 back. Gotcha. So that more or less, I see. So this is, uh, well, again, we were just talking about this absolute requirement. If you want to become a world champion, learn to resist, uh, do your best in bad positions. And for Akshat, uh, yeah, he's so doing his best. This is awful. I'm sorry. Like what? <laughs> Rookies. Ah! This is just so, so ah, annoying. <laughs> no, no. This is cute, though. Well, you have to find a good move. Absolutely. Rook e7 is a beauty. If you beauty. play rook of eight, careless as I did, then you're not winning. Well, maybe it, it, it's difficult. Uh, Brandon, this is interesting. I've, I'm seeing three results here. I yeah. don't think it's just uh, It's hard Brandon. to predict, especially especially White has 10 minutes and then Lamassov has 16 minutes. That's very useful to have that extra time. And Absolutely. lastly, we do expect that Aram is Aram winning, is winning for against sure. uh, Elshan. Because he's marching his king to c7, hopefully, and then trying to queen. Tricky rook and rook and, rook and pawn endings today. Yeah. Begum, Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, the championship rounds tomorrow. Yeah, I'm I mean, excited. We are going, it's all about crowning champions here in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And in case there's any ties for first, tomorrow will be the championship round day, but also playoffs if yeah. necessary. And, and also, we are starting the round at 11.30, and we will start the broadcast at 2 p.m. Central Time. Summer Chess Classic coming up tomorrow. Don't miss it. Thank you for being with us. Bye -bye. Thank you. See you tomorrow. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.